You see, there's a gap, a big gap between what we want and what we do. And it's this gap that keeps us from achieving the things we desire most. We want more for ourselves. We want to grow to succeed, to make a difference. But too often we allow hesitation, doubt, and fear to stand in the way. Now, I'm not here to tell you that wanting something isn't important because it is. But wanting isn't enough. Intention alone doesn't move you forward. It's action that bridges that gap. So let me ask you, what's holding you back? Seriously, think about it. What's keeping you from taking that first step, even if it's a small one? Is it fear? Are you afraid of failure, afraid that you might not get it right the first time? Or maybe it's doubt. You wonder if you really have what it takes. Maybe it's simply comfort. Because let's be honest, it's easier to stay in a place that's familiar even if it's not where we want to be. But here's the truth that most people don't realize. I, that fear, that doubt, that comfort, those are just stories we tell ourselves. They're not facts. They're not real obstacles. They're things we create in our minds. And once we recognize that, I want you to think about a time in your life when you did take action. It doesn't have to be something big, maybe just something small, a time when you pushed past the hesitation and got something done. How did you feel afterward? I'll bet you felt energized, accomplished, proud. That's the power of action. Taking action creates its own momentum. It builds confidence even if the action is small. Once you start, you realize that those fears and doubts were never as big as they seemed. One of the biggest misconceptions people have is that they need to wait until they feel ready to take action. But let me tell you something. You'll never feel completely ready. There will always be a reason to wait, something that seems like it needs to fall into place before you begin. But the truth is, action comes first. Clarity, confidence, motivation, they all follow. You don't wait for them. You create them by moving forward. It's like driving in the fog. You can't see the entire road ahead of you, right? But as you move forward, each new part of the road becomes visible. That's how life works. You don't have to have it all figured out. You just need to take the next step. And then the next one after that. I know some of you might be thinking, but what if I fail? What if I take action and it doesn't work out? Let me tell you something. Failure is part of the process. There is no success without failure. Every great success story you've ever heard, every person you admire has faced setbacks, challenges, even failures. But what sets them apart is that they didn't let those setbacks stop them. They kept moving forward. Think about a child learning to walk. Do they get it right on the first try? Of course not. They fall. They stumble. But they keep getting back up. They don't sit there and think, maybe I'm just not cut out for walking. They just keep trying. They take action, they learn from their falls, and eventually they get it. That's how we all need to approach life. We need to be willing to take that first step, even if we don't get it perfect. So what's your next step? What's the one small thing you can do right now to move closer to what you want? Maybe it's making that phone call you've been putting off or setting aside 10 minutes to work on that project you've been avoiding. Whatever it is, don't overthink it. Don't wait for everything to be perfect. Just take that first step. Action is what creates results, not intention, not planning, not wishing. Action, it's the doing that matters. And here's the best part. Once you take that first step, the next one becomes easier. The more you act, the more momentum you build. It's like a snowball rolling down a hill. It starts small, but as it moves, it picks up speed, it grows, and eventually it becomes unstoppable. What's holding you back? Is it really something external? Or is it just a story you've been telling yourself? You have the power to change that story right now. You have the power to take action. You don't need permission. You don't need perfect conditions. You don't need to wait any longer. Have you ever found yourself thinking, I'll do it tomorrow? Of course, we've all been there. We've all had those moments when we know what needs to be done, but something holds us back. We tell ourselves, I'm just not ready yet, or I need more time, or I'll start when things settle down. But deep down, we know that tomorrow turns into next week. Next week turns into next month. And before we know it, the opportunity has slipped through our fingers. So why do we do this? What keeps us from taking action when we know it's what will bring us closer to the things we truly want? I want to talk to you about this today because recognizing these obstacles, understanding why we hesitate is the first step toward overcoming 
One of the biggest reasons we delay action is fear. We're afraid of failure, afraid of rejection, afraid of making the wrong choice. Fear can be paralyzing. It convinces us that it's safer to stay right where we are, to avoid the unknown, to stick with what feels comfortable. We think, what if I try and fail? What if I'm not good enough? And so we put it off. We wait. We hope that somehow, magically, the fear will disappear and we'll feel ready. But here's the reality, it's gonna be there. I, it, it's part of being human. It's not something you can avoid or eliminate, and that's okay. The goal isn't to get rid of fear, but to learn to take action. In sp fear doesn't have to hold you back unless you let it. The difference between people who achieve what they want and those who don't isn't that one group is fearless. It's that the achievers feel the fear, but they move forward anyway. Think about this for a moment. When you were a child learning to ride a bike, were you afraid of falling? Absolutely. But you got on that bike anyway. You wobbled, you fell, maybe you scraped your knee, but you kept going. Why? Because you wanted the freedom that came with riding that bike more than you wanted to stay safe on the sidewalk. Fear didn't stop you then, so why should it stop you now? Another major reason people avoid taking action is procrastination. We've all done it. Push things to the side, thinking we'll get to them later. And maybe you found yourself saying, I work better under pressure, or I just need the deadline to get motivated. But if we're honest with ourselves, procrastination isn't about needing more time or waiting for the right mood. It's about avoiding discomfort. You see, taking action often requires stepping into discomfort. It forces us to confront uncertainty, to put in effort, to risk not knowing what the outcome will be. And it's so much easier to stay where it's comfortable, to avoid that discomfort by convincing ourselves that later will be a better time. But the truth is, later's an illusion. There's no perfect time to start. There's no magical day when everything will align and you'll suddenly feel ready. That's one of the biggest traps we fall into, waiting for the perfect moment. And I get it. We think we're being smart by waiting. We tell ourselves, I'll do it when I have more time or once I'm in the right headspace, I'll really focus on it. But I've got news for it. That perfect time isn't coming. Life is always going to be messy. There will always be something going on, work, family, responsibilities, unexpected events. Waiting for perfect conditions is like waiting for a bus that's never going to arrive. And while you're waiting, you're missing out on opportunities, on progress, on the chance to create the life you want. Think about how many people you've known who had dreams, goals, big ideas, and they just kept waiting for the right time. They kept saying, someday I'll get to it, but someday never came. Maybe you've even been that person at some point in your life. Maybe you're thinking right now about something you've been putting off, waiting for the stars to align. Let me tell you about a friend of mine. He had this idea to start his own business. He had the plan, the skills, everything he needed, except for one purge to take that first step. For years, he kept saying, I'm going to do it. I just need to wait for the right moment. But guess what? The right moment never came. He was always waiting for more savings or for the economy to get better or for his kids to get older. And you know what happened? Someone else came up with the same idea, took action, and made it happen. That could have been him. He had the potential, but because he hesitated, because he waited, the opportunity um, slipped away. The lesson here isn't to rush into things blindly or act without thinking. It's to recognize that waiting for the perfect time is a form of avoidance. The perfect time is now. The only way to make progress is to start where you are with what you have. Take action, even if it's imperfect, even if it's uncomfortable. Another obstacle we often face is a lack of clarity. We don't act because we're not exactly sure what we should be doing. We think, I don't have all the details worked out yet, so I'll wait until I have a clearer plan. But here's the thing. Clarity doesn't come from sitting around thinking about it. Clarity comes from action. When you take that first step, even if you're not entirely sure where it's leading, you gain insight. You learn what works and what doesn't. You adjust, you adapt, and slowly but surely the path becomes clear. It's like walking through fog. You can't see the entire road ahead, but as you move forward, each new step reveals a little bit more. But if you never take that first step, you'll stay stuck in the fog, never knowing what could have been. 
And then there's the comfort zone, the invisible bubble that keeps us from stretching beyond what feels safe and familiar. We stay in jobs that don't fulfill us, relationships that don't make us happy, routines that don't challenge us, all because it's comfortable. But comfort is a double-edged sword. It feels good in the moment, but over time, it holds us back from growth, from reaching our potential. Staying in your comfort zone might feel safe, but it's also where dreams go to die. I've seen so many people who get trapped in this space. They don't hate where they are, but they don't love it either. It's just, okay. And the longer they stay in that comfort zone, the harder it becomes to break free. They get used to settling, to just getting by, and they forget what it feels like to truly live with purpose, with passion. Well, how long are you willing to stay comfortable if it means giving up the life you could have? How long will you trade potential for safety, growth for routine? Because here's the thing. Everything you want lies outside of that comfort zone. The life you're meant to live, the goals you want to achieve, the person you're capable of becoming, all of that is waiting for you. But you have to be willing to step outside the bubble. Now, I'm not saying any of this is easy. I know it's hard to take that first step, especially when fear, procrastination, and doubt are standing in the way. But the discomfort you feel in taking action is temporary. The rewards of moving forward are lasting. Fear, doubt, discomfort, they're all part of the process. They don't mean you're on the wrong path. They mean you're growing. So the next time you find yourself hesitating, the next time you feel like saying, I'll do it tomorrow, or waiting for the perfect time, I want you to ask yourself, what am I really afraid of? I want you to think about the last time you stayed comfortable, the last time you avoided something challenging because it felt safe to do nothing. Think about it for a moment. Maybe it was staying in a job you didn't love because it paid the bills. Maybe it was sticking to a routine that didn't inspire you, but it was familiar. Or perhaps it was avoiding a conversation that needed to happen, telling yourself, I'll deal with it later. How much changed in those moments? Did things get better? Or did you just stay in the same place, feeling like something was missing? You see, comfort zones create a false sense of security. It feels like we're protecting ourselves by staying in them, but in reality, we're trapping ourselves. We tell ourselves at least things aren't getting worse. But what we don't realize is that nothing is getting better either. We're stagnant, and life doesn't reward stagnation. Comfort zones are sneaky because they feel good in the moment. It's easy to get lulled into thinking that if you just stay where it's safe, you won't have to deal with the fear of failure or the discomfort of uncertainty. But staying in that bubble isn't protecting you from failure. It's keeping you from growth. Growth never happens in the safe and familiar. It happens when we push beyond what we know and take on new challenges. Why does taking action feel so difficult sometimes? Have you ever noticed that something as simple as Starting a project or making a decision can suddenly feel like the hardest thing in the world. It's like there's this invisible weight holding you back, making even the smallest tasks seem overwhelming. And you wonder, why am I stuck? Why does this feel like such a burden? The truth is we often overcomplicate things in our minds. We take something that should be simple, straightforward, and we turn it into this huge, intimidating task. It's like standing at the base of a mountain and convincing yourself that you'll never make it. But the mountain is often much smaller than we think. We just build it up in our heads until it feels impossible to climb. Why do we do this? Why do we make mountains out of molehills when it comes to getting started? Part of it is fear, sure, but a big part of it is how our minds work. We have this tendency to focus on the entire journey ahead rather than just the next step. We look at everything that needs to be done all the work, all the effort, and it feels overwhelming. So we hesitate, we freeze, we tell ourselves, I'll start tomorrow or I'll wait until I'm more prepared. But here's the thing, you don't have to tackle everything at once. In fact, trying to do that is what creates this sense of overwhelm. The key is to break it down. Focus on what you can do right now in this moment rather than worrying about the entire journey ahead. Let me give you a practical example. Let's say you want to get in shape. Now, you could sit there and think about how much weight you need to lose, how often you'll have to exercise, how much time it's going to take, and how hard it's going to be. 
you could picture every workout, every healthy meal, and it might feel like this massive mountain that's impossible to climb. And when you look at it like that, of course, you're gonna feel stuck. Of course, you're gonna put it off. It feels like too much, but what if you simplified it? What if you stopped thinking about the whole mountain and just focused on the next step? Maybe that next step is taking a 10 minute walk today. That's it. You don't have to run a marathon or completely overhaul your diet overnight. Just take one small step and then tomorrow take another. Over time, those small steps add up. And before you know it, you've made more progress than you ever thought possible. The same principle applies to any goal or tasks. Whether you're trying to start a business, write a book, or learn a new skill, the key is to break it down into manageable pieces. Start with something small, something you can do today, right now, and then build on that. If you wrote just one page a day in a year, you'd have a 365 page book. But if you keep waiting until you feel ready, until the entire book is perfectly planned out in your mind, how much longer will you be stuck at page zero? So why does taking action feel difficult? Because we let our minds trick us into thinking we have to do everything all at once. We create this mental block by focusing on the entire mountain instead of just taking the next step. But when you shift your focus to small, consistent actions, everything changes. Have you ever noticed how easy it is to procrastinate? We think, I'll do it later, and somehow later never comes. But here's what I've learned. Procrastination isn't just about being lazy or not having enough motivation. It's about avoiding discomfort. It's about avoiding that initial resistance that comes with starting something new. Why is it that so many of us hesitate to take action? Why do we hold back when we know deep down what we want to achieve? One of the biggest reasons is fear, specifically the fear of failure. Think about it. How often have you stopped yourself from starting something? Not because you couldn't do it, but because you were afraid it wouldn't work out the way you hoped. This fear can feel so real, so powerful, that it keeps us from even trying. But here's the truth. Failure isn't the end. In fact, it's often just the beginning. When we think of failure, we tend to think of it as something final, as though it's the opposite of success. But what if I told you that failure is a necessary part of success? That every successful person you admire has faced failure more times than they can. We don't often hear about the failures. We see the achievements, the accolades, the success stories, but what we don't see are the countless times these people stumbled, the moments they doubted themselves, the times they thought about quitting. Look at Thomas Edison, for example. He's credited with inventing the light bulb, but do you know how many times he failed before getting it right? Over 1,000 failed attempts. Can you imagine that? Most of us would have given up after a few tries, maybe even just, Patterson understood something important. You know, failure wasn't a roadblock. It was just another step towards success. When asked about his failures, he famously said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways it won't work. He didn't let fear stop him because he knew that each failure was teaching him something valuable, something that would eventually lead him to the answer he was looking for. And he's not alone. Take J.K. Rowling, the author of the Harry Potter series. Before she became one of the best-selling authors of all time, she was rejected by 12 different publishers. 12. Can you imagine how easy it would have been for her to give up after the first, second, or even tenth rejection? But she didn't. She kept going because she believed in what she was doing, and eventually her perseverance paid off. What we often see as failure is really just a stepping stone on the path to success. I want to ask you, what are you really afraid of? What is it that's holding you back from taking that next step? Is it the fear of failing? Or is it the fear of what others might think if you fail? Often, we're more afraid of how we'll be perceived than we are of failure itself. We worry about judgment, about looking foolish, about not living up to expectations. But here's something important to remember. No one who has ever achieved great things did so without failing first. Failure is not a reflection of your worth. It's simply part of the process. We tend to think that success is a straight line, but it's not. Success is full of twists and turns, ups and downs, and yes, failures. But those failures aren't there to stop you. They're there to teach you, to help you grow, to guide you toward what will ultimately work. Each time you fail, you learn something. You gain experience. You build resilience. 
And that resilience is what will carry you through the tough times and help you come out stronger on the other side. Now, I know failure doesn't feel good. It's uncomfortable. It's discouraging. But it's also temporary. What lasts is the lesson you take from it, the growth that happens because of it. Every time you fail, you're given the opportunity to try again, to do things differently, to improve. And that's where real success is born from those moments when you could have given up but chose to keep going instead. Think about it. How many times have you avoided doing something because you were afraid it wouldn't work out? How many opportunities have you missed because you didn't want to take the risk? If you keep waiting until you're certain you won't fail, you'll be waiting forever. There's no such thing as a guarantee in life. But here's what you can guarantee. If you never try, you'll never know what's possible. So, what if you reframe the way you think about failure? Instead of seeing it as something to fear, what if you saw it as part of the process? What if you saw it as a stepping stone, a lesson, an opportunity to grow? When you shift your perspective like that, failure stops being something to avoid. It becomes something to embrace because you know that with each failure, you're one step closer to success. Let me give you an example. Take someone like Michael Jordan. We all know him as one of the greatest basketball players of all time. But do you know how many times he failed before reaching that level of success? He was actually cut from his high school basketball team. Can you imagine? But instead of letting that failure define him, he used it to, to fuel his drive. He practiced harder, he pushed himself further, and he came back stronger. And that's what made him great. Not just his talent, but his willingness to keep going, even when things didn't go his way. So here's my challenge to you. you, you, you I let the fear of failure stop you from taking action. Don't let it keep you stuck where you are. Failure is not the opposite of success. It's a part of it. It's the bridge that takes you from where you are to where you want to be. The only real failure is not trying at all. The next time you find yourself hesitating, the next time you feel that fear creeping in, ask yourself, what am I really afraid of? And then ask yourself, what's the worst that could happen if I fail? Chances are, the worst case scenario isn't as bad as you think. And even if it doesn't go the way you planned, you'll still be better off for having tried. You'll learn something, you'll have grown, and you'll be that much closer to where you want to be. So take that first step, even if it's scary, even if you're not sure how it will turn out, because failure isn't something to be feared. It's something to be embraced. It's a necessary part of the journey towards success. And when you learn to see it that way, nothing will be able to hold you back. Now, personal accountability can be tough. It means looking in the mirror and saying, I am responsible for where I am right now. That's not easy, especially when things aren't going the way you hoped. But here's the beauty of it. Once you take responsibility, you gain the power to change it. You stop being a victim of your circumstances and you become the creator of your own life. It's easy to blame other people or external factors when things aren't going well. It's easy to point fingers and say, if only this person would change or if only this situation were different, then everything would be better. But the truth is that kind of thinking keeps you stuck. It gives your power away. When you take ownership, you take that power back. You realize that you have the ability to change your life no matter what's going on around you. How can you take ownership of your life today? What decisions are you making right now that are shaping your reality? Are you waiting for someone else to take control? Are you ready to step up and take responsibility? It doesn't matter where you've been or what you've been through. What matters is what you choose to do from this point forward. Look at the great leaders. The innovators, the people who have made a lasting impact on the world, what do they all have in common? They didn't wait for someone to hand them success. They didn't make excuses or blame their circumstances. They took full responsibility for their lives and they made things happen. And you can do the same. It starts with a decision, a decision to stop waiting and start. Use the, use the thing, ownership doesn't mean you won't face setbacks. It doesn't mean everything will go smoothly. But it does mean that you will approach every challenge with the understanding that you have the power to respond in a way that moves you forward. You will no longer be at the mercy of life circumstances because you'll know that 
You are the one in control. Are you waiting for someone else to change your life for you? Or are you ready to take full responsibility to step into your power and to create the life you've always wanted? The choice is yours. No one else can make it for you. But I promise you this. Once you make that choice, once you take ownership of your life, the possibilities are limited. Because when you stop waiting and start taking responsibility, you take back your power. And that's when real transformation happens. You become the author of your own story, and that's a story worth telling. So what's your next step? What are you going to do today to take ownership of your life? It's in your hands now. Don't wait for someone else to write your story. Start writing it yourself. When you think about making big changes in your life, it can feel overwhelming, can it? You look at the mountain of work ahead and it's easy to get stuck before you even start. But let me ask you, this, what's the smallest step you can take today to move toward your goal? Not the biggest, not the most impressive, just the smallest. Because as small as that step may seem, it's the key to building something powerful momentum. Think about it for a second. When you're trying to move a heavy object, the hardest part is getting it started, right? But once it's moving, it gets easier to keep going. That's how momentum works in life too. The more you act, even in small ways, the more energy you create to keep moving forward. And here's the best part. Once you get that momentum, everything else starts to fall into place. But it all begins with that one small step. What's the smallest step you can take today? It doesn't have to be huge. It could be as simple as making one phone call, writing down a plan, or setting your alarm a little earlier tomorrow. The point is to just start. Small wins matter, and they matter more than you might realize. Let me share a story with you about a man named James Clear. You may have heard of him. He's the author of a best-selling book called Atomic Habits. But before he wrote that book, James was just like many of us. He wanted to change his life, but he felt stuck. He knew he needed to make some big improvements, but the thought of overhauling everything at once felt too daunting. So instead, he focused on making tiny changes, what he called atomic habits, small habits, incremental improvements. He started by just showing up every day and committing to doing a little better than the day before. And over time, these small habits began to build on each other. They compounded. One tiny action led to another, and before long, those small wins created massive momentum. Today, James Clear's work has changed millions of lives around the world, but it all started with the decision to take one small step. That's what I want to remind you of today. It's not about making giant leaps all at once. It's about creating small wins day after day. Those small wins build confidence. They give you the belief that you can keep going, that you're making progress. And the more you build on those wins, the more momentum you create. Success isn't about doing everything perfectly right from the start. It's about showing up consistently, doing what you can, and letting the small steps lead you forward. Every time you accomplish something, even if it feels small, you're giving yourself a boost of motivation. You're proving to yourself that you're capable. And that momentum begins to work like fuel. It breeds more motivation. The more you do, the more you want to do, and that's where real change happens. But it's important to recognize your progress along the way. We live in a world that's always telling us to focus on the end goal, on the big picture. And while that's important, it's equally important to celebrate the small victories. Have you ever accomplished something and then just rushed right past it, not even giving yourself credit? We do this all the time. But when you take a moment to acknowledge your progress, it builds your confidence. It reminds you that you're moving in the right direction, that you're capable of achieving more. So I want to encourage you to celebrate those small wins. If you get up early and work on your goals for just 15 minutes, that's a win. If you make one healthy decision today, that's a win. If you resist the temptation to procrastinate and instead take action, that's a win. And every win, no matter how small, is a step toward building the momentum you need to achieve something greater? Think about it. What would happen if you committed to just five minutes of action today? Five minutes. That's all it takes to start. Those five minutes might not seem like much in the moment, but over time they add up. 
And as you continue to show up and take action, you'll find that five minutes turns into 10, then 20, then an hour. It's not about how much you can do all at once. It's about the consistency of showing up, no matter how small the action. I've seen people transform their entire lives by starting small. One person I know wanted to run a marathon, but they hadn't exercised in years. Instead of setting a huge intimidating goal, they committed to running for just five minutes a day. That's it, just five minutes. But after a few weeks, those five minutes turned into 10, then 20, and before they knew it, they were running miles. Eventually, they ran that marathon. But it all started with five minutes a day. Those small wins created the momentum they needed to keep going. Here's what I want you to take away from this. Momentum is powerful, and it starts with the smallest of actions. Don't wait for everything to be perfect. Don't wait for the ideal circumstances. Just start where you are with what you have and do what you can. Take that first small step and then take another and another. Before long, you'll realize that those tiny actions are adding up to something bigger than you ever imagined. And remember, the more you do, the easier it becomes. Momentum creates energy and that energy propels you forward. Suddenly, the things that once seemed hard or impossible start to feel manageable. You begin to see that success isn't this distant, unattainable goal. It's the result of consistent, small actions that build over time. What's the smallest step you can take today to move toward your goal? What can you do right now in this moment that will start the process of building momentum? Don't overthink it. Don't make it complicated. Just take that first step, no matter how small. Because once you start, you're already on your way. And that's how real change begins, with one small win leading to another and another until you've created a momentum so strong that nothing can stop you. Now, we spent all of this time talking about the importance of action, the power of small steps, and the need to push past fear and discomfort. But here's the truth that wraps it all up. None of this matters if you don't act on it. You can have all the knowledge in the world, read every self-help book, listen to the most inspiring people, attend the best seminars, and still not get anywhere. Unless you take action, that's the difference between those who achieve what they set out to do and those who keep spinning their wheels, staying in the same place. What will you do with what you've learned today? Will it just be something you hear and forget? Or will it be the spark that moves you to make a change? Because it's not enough to just understand the principles we've discussed. You have to apply them. It's action that turns ideas into reality. Action is the bridge between where you are now and where you want to be. And you don't need anyone's permission to take it. Maybe you've been waiting for the right time. Maybe you've been telling yourself, I'll start tomorrow or I'll do it when I'm more ready, when things settle down, when the timing is perfect. But let me tell you something and hear me clearly. The right time never comes. Waiting for it is a trap. It's an illusion we create to keep ourselves comfortable to avoid stepping into the unknown. Life isn't going to hand you the perfect moment on a silver platter. You have to make that moment happen by deciding that now is the time, right now. So what's stopping you? What excuse are you holding on to that's keeping you from taking that first step? Is it fear? Is it doubt? Or are you simply comfortable with the way things are, even if deep down you know you want more? These are the questions we all have to answer. Honestly, if we're going to move forward. The only difference between those who succeed and those who don't isn't talent, luck, or connections. It's action. Successful people are not waiting for life to happen to them. They're out there making life happen. They're not waiting for everything to be perfect before they begin. They start where they are with what they have and they keep moving forward. They take small steps, they stumble sometimes, they learn from failure, but they keep going. That's the secret. You have everything you need right now to take the first step. You don't need to have all the answers or a perfect plan. You don't need to know every detail of how things will turn out. You just need to start. Don't wait for circumstances to align perfectly because they rarely ever will. And you know what? That's okay. You'll figure things out as you go and with each step you take, the path will become clearer. Remember, nothing changes if you don't change. Your life, your goals, your dreams, they're all in your hands. No one else is responsible for them. 
No one else is coming to make it easier. And that's empowering because it means you hold the power. The question is, will you use it? What would your life look like a year from now if you started today? How different would things be? And then think about what your life would look like if you waited another year, telling yourself the same old excuses, putting off the things you know deep down you need to do. Time is going to pass either way. The only question is, what are you going to do with it? Will you let another day, another month, another year go by while you sit and wait? Or will you decide right here and now that today is the day you take control? You have the power to decide. It's not up to anyone else. It's up to you. You've been given the tools. You've been given the insights. And now it's time to make a choice. The first step doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be taken. I leave you with this. Will you start today or will you wait again until tomorrow? Will you act now or will you keep telling yourself the same old story? Only you can answer that. But I'll tell you this, your future is waiting for you and it's shaped by the actions you take starting today. Not tomorrow, not next week, right now.